everything back on. All right. So get settled into your yogic seat in your chair. And I would like to begin actually with a very beautiful and powerful and ancient mantra um, from the yoga tradition. It's a very simple mantra. It's only two words. And the words are so hum, so hum. And what that means is I am that. Uh, so means that, and hum means I am. And when we say that mantra, we are reminding ourselves, I am that, that with a capital T. I am that, which is infinite, eternal, and whole. I am the divinity, which I seek. That's kind of the whole ruse of the whole thing is that what we are looking for is what is looking. Ponder that one. That's like a, a Zen koan. So I am that reminds us that I am the consciousness that is living and breathing and having its being through this form, through this body mind. So when we use the mantra, I am that, we are reminding ourselves that we are bigger than our egoic mind, and we are more vast and eternal than just this body and just these thoughts and emotions and sensations that move through this body mind. So it's a lovely mantra to kind of expand our awareness into remembering that we are an expression of the totality. So find your yogic seat. And I'm just going to put on a little reverb on my voice. And I'm going to invite you to settle into uh, our practice and this mantra with a deep breath in, in through the nose, filling all the way up, lifting the breath into the chest, savor, pause at the top, and exhale. Release anything that doesn't need to be here, any tension in the body. Another deep breath in, filling all the way up into the chest. Anything that is pulling at your attention in the mind, let it dissolve with the out breath. And again, one more deep breath in, any heaviness in the heart. Anything in the emotional realm that can be offered out, let it go with an exhale. So hum, and you're all on mute. So in your own uh, space, I invite you to sing along in response, if you like. Otherwise, you can just receive it and take it in. So hum, so hum, so hum, Shiva hum, so hum, so hum. So hum Shiva hum. Shiva refers to the consciousness that is that totality. So hum, so hum, so hum Shiva hum. So hum, so hum. So hum Shiva hum. So hum, so hum. So hum shivo hum. We can try it in English now. I am that I am. 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 Try that with me. I am that I am. I am that I am. I am that I am, I am that I am. So hum together. So hum, so hum, so hum, Shiva hum, so hum, so hum, so hum, Shiva hum.
Let your eyes close and refresh your posture so your spine is long and lifted as you're seated on your chair. Reach your tailbone down into the earth and the crown of the head to the sky. Let the shoulders roll down and back so the heart is spread wide. And breathing in and out through the nose, I invite you to let that mantra ride on the breath. So on the in-breath, hum on the out-breath, just silently to yourself. When we work with this mantra, so hum, we sync it up with the breath and let it mirror the sound of the breath. If your mouth were open when you're breathing, which we're not going to do, but if it were, the breath would kind of make that sound of the mantra. So, hum. But just silently to yourself, let that long, slow in-breath internally invite the sound of so, and that long, slow out-breath, let the sound hum, echo inwardly. So on the in-breath, hum on the out-breath, in and out through the nose, lips are closed gently. And in this way, the cycle of breathing invites us into the remembrance, I am that I am. I am that divinity which I seek. I am that consciousness that pervades everything and that shows up in me as this beautiful form, this body, this mind, this breath. So hum, I am that. So on the in-breath, hum on the out-breath. And then let the eyes open with a soft gaze. And let that so hum breath begin to enliven the body with seated sun breaths. Let the breath lift the arms so on the in breath as you lift your hands to the sky. Exhale, hum on the out breath. Just let that so hum mantra be riding in the back of your consciousness, focusing mostly on the breathing and movement and bringing that into one flow, and just lightly letting that mantra ride in the back of the mind. So with every breath and every movement, we are reminding ourselves of how vast we are. So hum. So reaching and lifting, hum, I am that. And again, so hum. And let the hands come to the knees and take it into cat-cow movements. So on the in-breath, arching the spine, spreading the heart, shoulders down and back, lifting the chin, exhale, hum. Roll onto the back of your sit bones and bring the chin to the chest. So cat-cow spinal waves. So hum, riding on the breath. So on the in-breath, hum on the out-breath. Just inviting the six movements of the spine. And if you begin to get a little warm and need to take off a layer like I do, you can do that. You can pause for a moment to remove a layer. In and out through the nose, inviting in that ujjayi sound in the back of the throat, just narrowing the airway a little bit.
And then once again, long spine, root to crown, shoulders balanced beautifully over the hips. Take it into some side bends. Just let your right hand gently grasp the side of your chair. Left hand rises. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, come into a side bend, reach long and away. Both sit bones remain connected with the chair. Unshrug that left shoulder. Open and expand through the ribs on the left side. Inhale up to center. Exhale, float the arm down to your side. Notice the difference between both sides, one side and the other. And then other side. Reach and lift, find length, and exhale into your side bend. Draw the right shoulder away from the ear, even as you're reaching those fingertips long and away. Smile open through the ribs. Inhale up, exhale down. And at your own pace, one more each side. Enjoy the sinking up of movement, breath, and attention. And then rolling the shoulders up and back and down, finding your range of motion in your shoulders, just letting the shoulders move, <sighs> letting the arms just come along for the ride. <sighs> and then roll them forward. <sighs> Pausing in stillness for a moment, letting the palms Face up on the thighs, just feeling the energy in the arms. Wherever you're noticing any pulsing, tingling, warmth, or sensation. We'll take it into twists. Arms reach and rise. Reach through right, reach through left. Exhale into a twist to your right. Finding a little leverage with the left hand outside right knee. Inhale up to center. Exhale into the twist to the other side. Hold for as long as your exhale. See if you can make your exhale longer than your inhale. Flowing side to side, sinking it up with that so hum breath. So, so as you come to center, hum as you come into your twist, nice and long. And if it feels too much to think about the mantra as you're doing these movements and breath, just let it be movement and breath. Using the mantra is just an invitation. Usually we just do it in stillness and meditation, but you can also invite it into your movement if it feels appropriate, if you enjoy that. One more round side to side, right and left. Next time you come back to center, bring the hands together in front of the heart, bringing those polarities together. And just let the thumbs rest on the sternum. Soften the muscles around the eyes, the jaw, the brow, the cheekbones, the temples. And then I'm going to invite you into another breathing practice here that is very enlivening and kind of builds a little bit more heat and allows the prana to flow more vigorously. And that is the breath of joy. We're going to swing the arms. So make sure you're nice and forward on your chair and hopefully have room to swing your arms beside you on your chair without thwacking your hands into anything. So three movements with three breaths, or actually, actually three sips of air on the inhale, one strong exhale through the mouth. So the inhale is through the nose three times, and there's one exhale with a ha through the mouth. So it looks like this. Inhale, 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 and ha. And as you exhale, you're going to allow the shoulders to fall forward and the chin to drop to the chest, 
or you can fold all the way over onto your legs. But if you have any low back issues, you might just want to do chin to chest, shoulders round. So upper back rounds and you just let the arms release. So it's forward, side, up, and then ha, release with a ha through the mouth. In through the nose three times, out through the mouth with a ha. Inhale, 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 ha. Inhale, inhale, inhale. So this is called the breath of joy. So let it be joyful and a little bit playful. As you get a little bouncy with the arms, like you're a child playing here. Inhale, inhale, inhale. And by that third sip of breath in, you should be filled up all the way into the chest. Ha. Inhale, 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 ha. And if at any point you feel dizzy or lightheaded, just come into your three-part sun breaths, lifting and lowering. So don't do anything that makes you too dizzy, but you should feel some alivening. Sometimes we do get a little bit of a, a buzz, a lightheadedness doing this. Inhale, inhale, Inhale and ha. And on this exhale, you really want to release any stagnant energy. So it's a Kriya that allows any stuckness, stagnation, negative energy to release. We'll do one more after this. Ha. Inhale, 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 and ha. And let the hands press into the thighs and slowly lift up. Keep the chin tucked into the chest until the very end when you lift the head. Let the arms reach and rise overhead. Palms come together. Let the hands come down to the heart. And once again, let the backs of the hands rest on the thighs. Refresh your posture. Soften your shoulders away from your ears. Spread your heart. And just feel the energy, the tingling, what I call the prana buzz. And just take a few long, slow, deep breaths in and out through the nose to let the breath normalize, perhaps reconnecting with the mantra, so hum, so hum. So on the in-breath, hum on the out-breath. And then eyes open with a soft gaze. Interlace your fingers behind you or use your strap for yoga mudra. As you know, you can always choose to do this standing and do the forward fold standing if that feels available to you. Otherwise, do it on your chair. Nice and forward on your chair. Nice and wide open in your heart. As you squeeze the shoulder blades together, I'm just going to turn sideways so you can see me. You want your arms to be straight. If the elbows are bending and sticking out to the side, then use a few inches of strap in between your hands and pull it tight. And just take a moment to breathe right in and out of that heart center. Just enjoying the power of an open heart. Keep lifting up through the crown of the head and rooting down through the tail. Expand and radiate open to that heart center. Today's quote, open heart quote, is from the Sufi poet Rumi. Your heart is the size of an ocean. Go find yourself in its hidden depths. Your heart is the size of an ocean. Go find yourself in its hidden depths. And then if it feels comfortable, let yourself fall forward, either bringing your belly to your thighs and maybe letting the head hang down from here, hands reach up to the sky, getting a little more stretch in the upper back and shoulders and upper arms. Or if you need to, having a Blanket in between your belly and your thighs. You can let your hands release to hang down. And just let the head release if that feels appropriate for you. And if your head is, if you can allow that release 
in the neck, letting the crown of the head release to the earth, letting everything go, feeling that lovely stretch along the back body, right from your sacrum all the way up the center of the back, through the shoulder blades, down the up the neck or down the neck as it is now, as we're hanging down and down with the crown of the head toward the earth. See if you can find some movement of the head to release. Find your yes. What are you saying yes to today? What are you saying no to and find your no? What are you letting go of? Just lovingly releasing something that doesn't serve you. And then you can let your head make that infinity sign, just reminding us to be open it, open to the infinite possibility of this day. And remember, if it's not appropriate for you to let your head hang down below your waist, you can just let your hands press into your thighs and just let your chin soften toward your chest, get a stretch in the back of the neck. When you're ready, hands press into the thighs, slowly round up, chin to chest, head comes up last. Shoulders roll down and back once more, bring the backs of the hands to the thighs, lengthen up to the crown of the head. Feel the, the effect of inviting that length with reverse gravity. When we let the spine hang down and let the head, the weight of the head invite a lengthening in the neck, that reverse gravity invites space between the vertebrae. I'm going to invite you into a wonderful uh, arm, another upper body practice called Gomukhasana. Here you might want to have your strap, so you might want to have it available to use. I'm going to show you a few different variations of this. And what I think I will do is come up nice and close so that uh, you can see me a little bit better as I do this, but you'll still be on your chair. All right, shoulders stacked over hips. Going to uh, take, let's start with your right hand. Reach your right hand to the sky. I'll fix my screen so that you can hopefully see my entire upper body and my arms. Reach your <clears throat> fingers to the sky. Unshrug the shoulder as you do that. So what happens is we end up wanting to scrunch. See if you can unscrunch. And then bend the elbow, pat yourself on the back. Notice how far your fingers go down your upper back, just right in the center between the shoulder blades. And then take the other arm. We're going to invite that elbow to come behind you so that it points straight up even with the spine or the center of the head. It may not go all the way, but we're going to just invite that nice stretch in the underarm. The whole side body begins to stretch here, the side of the torso. And you notice that your fingertips come a little bit further down. I'm going to turn back so that you can see behind. And then the other arm reaches out, reaches behind you. And we want to see if we can hook the fingers together like this. Now, that's a little bit of a stretch for many people. And that's why having the strap, holding the strap in the upper hand and letting it hang down so the lower hand can walk up the strap. One elbow points up, one elbow points down. Now, for some of you, even doing that is going to be a bit of a stretch. So an easier variation is to just have one elbow point up, one elbow point down, and hook your fingers together with your hands behind your head. Palm faces one way on one hand and the other way on the other hand, and give a little pull. So one elbow points down, one elbow points up. So that gives you a similar kind of stretch. What you want to do, whether you're doing the full stretch, any version of this, whether you're using strap or doing the full stretch, you want to avoid letting that upper arm press the chin into the chest. You want to keep the chin level. So you've got that elegant lift in the spine, crown of the head reaching up. So maybe lean the back of the head a little bit into that upper arm to avoid any slouch asana. And breathe into the sensations. You're going to feel a nice deep stretch in the upper arm on the other side as well, in the front of the upper arm. Big breath. Exhale, release, slowly unwind. Now, the arm that was behind you, which if you were mirroring me, would be your left arm, just bring that upper arm in front of you. Take the right hand and just press it into the center of the chest. 
so that you get a nice opposite stretch that usually feels like a nice release, relief and release. Gomukhasana traditionally means the face of the cow, but sometimes uh, at Kripalu, they would call this pose the face of light. Release and just notice what's alive in your arms before we do it on the other side. Remember, you can always just hook your fingers like so behind your head, one arm down, one arm, one elbow down, one elbow up to do a gentler version of this pose. The full expression of it is a pretty strong stretch. So if the, if the strap helps you, you can use that. Lengthen up through your spine and let the left hand reach to the sky. Unshrug and then just bend at the elbow to pat yourself on the back because you deserve that pat on the back. Other hand invites the elbow to draw toward the center line of the body as far as it will comfortably go, no strain. And then the other hand comes around and back behind. You're gonna hook your fingers. Do you remember that game, the barrel of monkeys? You had these little plastic monkeys that had their hands like this and you had to hook one hand to grab another monkey and see how many you could hook together in a chain. So that's kind of the way we wanna have our hands. Maybe it'll just be tippy fingers touching or using your strap or doing this variation, one elbow up, one elbow down. Face of light. Remembering not to let the chin slump down into the chest, keep the back of the neck long, chin level, lifting up through the crown of the head, let yourself be that face of light. Feel the light coming right out of the third eye, out of the eyes. Little Buddha smile here. Edges of the mouth lift toward the ears. Oh, yeah. One more breath. And then slowly release. Oh, yeah. And then the right arm, which was behind you, upper arm comes in front of the chest and let the left hand just press that upper arm into the chest. Oh, yeah. And that should feel like a nice stretch, too. Lovely. And then just bring both. Um, just take a moment to find any prana response, any way that you want to release that sequence of postures. So any movements, any wiggles and waggles that feel good. It's not just me telling you what to do. Simon says, do this. Simon says, do that. But you listening to your own body and finding the intuitive ways that your ah, body wants to release that sequence. Mm. Mm. Uh, any noises that want to come out. Sometimes it's just a ah, letting go sound that ah, needs to happen. And then from here, let the knees be a little bit wider apart, hands on your thighs, and find those torso circles. Ah, shifting your weight from one sit bone to the other, making the shoulders wider and wider in those circles. <sighs> Bringing some movement to the waist torso. <sighs> Massaging the glutes as you do this as well, as you shift from one buttock to the other. <sighs> and then switch directions of your circles. Breathing deeply in and out through the nose. Enjoying your breath. And come back slowly. Make the circles get a little smaller and smaller till you come back to stillness. Centered on your sit bones, feel the reverberation with a breath in and a breath out. And we'll take it into figure four, nice hip opener here. So drawing the left thigh in toward your ribs, turning the left knee out and meet just above ankle to your right thigh. All right, so you're gonna be forward on your sit bones. You're making those figure four legs. 
if this feels a little tight for you to get into that position, you can move your bottom foot forward a little bit, just a few inches enough so that you can get into it with a little more ease and comfort. And then once you find that, then you can challenge yourself maybe to move that foot back, which will deepen the stretch. If you feel like the stretch is, okay, I got this, then you can deepen a little bit by pressing into the inner knee or inner thigh to invite a little more rotation open of the hip. Remember, you want to meet above the ankle, so you don't want to have your foot sickling or bending. You just want to have the whole foot past the, the, the thigh, which would be your right thigh if you're mirroring me. Long spine, enjoy that press. Breathing into wherever you notice the sensations, in the hip, in the glutes, maybe in the outer thigh. Oh, yeah. You are a sentient being, alive with sensation. If you want to take it deeper, you can come onto your forearms. Sometimes it's more comfortable to do that with a pillow or bolster or blanket between your thigh, your figure four legs and your belly. If it feels comfortable, you can fold over. Here's sometimes uh, it's uh, useful to have a block underneath, just underneath your shoulders, if you have one available. With that forward fold, you're gonna notice a much juicier stretch here. Keep both buttocks connected with the chair. You can let the head hang down or just reach long and away out with the crown of the head. We're focusing here on the sensation in the hip, glutes, thigh on the right side. You might also notice a stretch if you're folding forward in the low back. Never want to go to the point of pain, only to the point where it's juicy. That oh yeah place. Ah. Just stay for two more breaths here. Sending your breath where you notice the sensation is strong, letting your breath massage that area. And anytime you feel the need to come out, listen to your own intuitive wisdom. You can bring your hands to your thighs or to your figure four legs and slowly press up, release, come back into seated mountain with knees in line with your hips. Notice the difference between one side and the other. So we're noticing the effect that the pose has. I'm actually going to move my whole set up a little closer for you so you can see me a little better. Let's take it on the other side. Have your blanket nearby if you used it on the other side for the forward fold. Draw your thigh in first toward your ribs, then turn that knee out. Rest above ankle on the middle or front section of your left thigh and let that right knee turn out. Feel the centeredness and balance on both sit bones. Feel the length up through the spine. So we keep the integrity of the upper body at first before we do the forward fold and maybe taking a little press to juice it up if you're needing that. And it might be that your knee wants to stick up a lot higher. That's okay. Again, you can experiment with sliding that lower foot in front of you, a little bit away from you in front. And just take a few breaths to explore here. Yum, yum. It's always helpful to find that little Buddha smile, little lifting the edges of the mouth. Not a, not a fake like Oh, I'm really enjoying this when it's feeling challenging, but just that little bit of lift can actually change, uh, create an energetic shift in you, can change our, our mood. But just that little bit of, I got this. If it feels comfortable to fold forward, I enjoy putting my blanket in between my figure four legs and my belly. And you can either hang down, letting the back of the neck lengthen again, just like we did in the forward fold before, or reaching the crown 
away in front of you. Hands can come to a block. The block can be on the high setting or a lower setting if it's available. Or you can just let the hands go if that's comfortable for your low back. Breathe and enjoy and go for the juice. Perhaps letting that so hum mantra remind you that you are bigger than these sensations, than this perhaps little bit of discomfort that arises when we challenge ourselves. You are the consciousness that is breathing through you. that is moving through you, that it's having its being as you. And when you're ready to release, slowly bring the hands to your figure four legs, press up nice and slow. Notice what it feels like to come out of the pose and unwind and come back to a seated mountain. One deep breath in, slow, long exhale. And when you're ready, come slowly to standing. And we'll do a sequence, a few standing pose sequence, sequence of a few standing poses. I'm going to turn my chair sideways so that you can see. I'm going to invite you to come into downward dog. This time, most of the time, I've been demonstrating downward dog with your hands on the back of the chair, stepping back like so. If that's more comfortable and accessible to you, you're welcome to do that one. Otherwise, I invite you to come into a downward dog pose with your hands on the seat of the chair. The hands can be in the center or you could walk them forward so your fingertips grasp the back of the chair. It all depends on the size of your chair seat. And reaching the sit bones back. This way you get a little bit more of a diagonal line that is closer to the traditional downward dog pose, which is done with the hands on the floor an inverted V. You can walk your feet back, find that stretch in the backs of the legs, and let the upper arms frame the ears. You can even rest your head on the chair if that's available to you. Let the heart soften down, let the shoulder blades come toward one another to let that heart melt down. Reach the tailbone back, press the low belly toward the front of the thighs, Spread the sit bones wide. Slowly bend the knees and bring your shoulders over your hands. So we're kind of coming into, you can walk your feet together. So we're kind of coming into a standing table. And then we'll take that downward dog one more time. So you're going to walk your feet back a little bit and walk your hands forward a little bit. So you have a diagonal line from your hips to your fingertips. Mm. Feel the navel drawing in and up to support the lengthening of the spine. Feel the stretch in the shoulders and upper arms. And to come out, slowly press into the hands to rise up and walk the feet closer to a standing table. Now we're going to come into a core strengthener and something that works the glutes and the, or the, the lower back, the backs of the legs as well. Um, it's called the Warrior Three, and it's a leg lift. So you can either have your hands under your shoulders if you're back is flat here, or if it's more comfortable to come down onto your forearms, just depending on the size of your body and the length of your arms. So you can be hands flat on the seat or down onto your forearms with your elbows underneath your shoulders. 
And what I invite you to do is firm your core and slowly lift one leg, reach it back. Now, it might just be that you're going to slide that foot back and just tippy toes touch, or you might be able to lift it just a little bit. And what we ultimately want to do is lift so we have a long horizontal line through the back body. This is called the warrior three. Uh, traditional way is that you would do um, both arms out to the side or out, or out to the front. We're just going to let ourselves support ourselves on our hands, reaching, pressing out through the heel, power up that back leg and float it down. All right, shift your weight now to press firmly into the opposite foot. So if you did left leg, then now right leg, lifting up back behind you. See how it feels on this side, lift it as high as you can comfortably lift it. Firm your core, navel lifts in and up, press out through the heel, knee points straight down. So there's an internal rotation of the leg, toes point straight down. Power up that back leg, exhale, float it down. All right, <laughs> take it on the other side again. Lift and lengthen, feel how that, uh, up to, those abdominal muscles need to draw in toward the center. Just get as much lift as you can. You want a long horizontal line through the, through the whole back body. So don't let the head flop down or kink, or kink your neck back. Just long line, crown reaching forward. Exhale, release and feel the weight even in both feet. And then when you're ready, inhale, lift up, press back. Uh, try to keep your hips level. So what happens is sometimes we want to lift the hip of the leg that's lifted, but you want to try to keep your hips level with one another. Power up that leg and float it down. Uh, let's do one more each side, and we're going to take a downward dog in between. So inhale, lift up one leg, lengthen out, feel a long line of energy out through the crown of the head and out through the heel of the lifted leg. Exhale, release, and walk the feet back into your downward facing dog. And then once again, shoulders over wrists. Walk the feet forward to, so that they're underneath your hips so that you have uh, a horizontal or a vertical line through your legs. And you're going to find that horizontal line through the body as you lift. Now, again, it may be that you're just going to reach your toe back, just a little bit of lift a few inches off the floor might be enough for you. And we'll work up to being able to lift into a long horizontal line. Press out, big breath, feel that power, long line through your body and exhale, release. And walk the feet back a few inches, take it into your downward facing dog. Ah, oh, exhale, soften the knees and rise up as you walk forward and letting your hand support you on your chair as you come up, rolling up, coming back to mountain samastiti, equal balance on both feet. Now, as you stand, I'm gonna invite you to come to stand behind your chair. We're going to do a, a different kind of balance play today. One that I always say looks kind of easy, but actually is a bit of a challenge. And this also works the calf muscles, the lower legs, and the ankles and the bottoms of the feet. Um, as you stand in your mountain pose behind your chair, just let your tippy fingers just very lightly touch the back of the chair. And we'll just take some lifting and lowering. Inhale, lift the heels. So you're coming just onto the balls of the feet and the toes, not the tippy toes, but your toes are curled under. And you're just lifting as much as your foot as you, can, as you can, still being on the balls of your feet. Feel the calves activate and exhale, lower down, float the heels down. So see if you can do that without landing with a thud. Inhale, lift up. Let the breath be slow enough so that you can hold for a moment here. And exhale, slowly lower down. So we're syncing up movement and breath. So if your breath is nice and long and slow and deep, your movements are nice and slow and controlled. 
See if you can do this with the minimal amount of fingertip touching on the chair rather than gripping the chair. Hmm. Inhale, lift, exhale, roll down. And on the next lift, I'm gonna invite you to hold. And you may need to keep your fingertips just gently on the chair, just, just enough to keep you steady. Or you may be able to let one hand rise to the sky. And maybe you can let both hands rise to the sky. How long can you hold this? Oh yeah. <laughs> and slowly releasing. Just shake out the legs for a moment. We'll do it one more time so you can practice the other hand rising first if you did one hand. All right. Fingertips just lifting. And notice how the core actually helps hold you up here. You really have to find that core activation in and up rooting the tailbone down. So you feel that long line of energy through the body. Maybe one arm can lift, other side now. Maybe you need to have one tip, tippy finger on the chair, that's fine. Maybe you can play for just a breath, lifting the other hand and slowly floating your heels down when you're ready to release. Okay. And you can feel that, that really works the calf muscle to do that. So shake out one leg. <sighs> and then shake out the other leg. And see if you can shake out both legs at the same time. No, don't, not. <laughs> and just take a moment to notice how you feel. We're going to do one more uh, chair posture. He was, this cat was supposed to be locked up in the room upstairs, so I don't know why he, how he got out. Um, so uh, I'm gonna invite you to come into your warrior one pose. We have practiced warrior one behind the chair. You all know this one. So we practiced warrior one like so. Now, and we've practiced warrior two on the chair, which is a hip opener, where we took one thigh and let it run along the front edge of the chair. We're gonna do a very similar thing, except this time we're going to turn the hips to face right in, to face the side of your, of your chair. So I'm gonna invite you to bring, let's, if you're gonna mirror me, bring your right butt cheek onto the chair and the right thigh along, just along the front edge of the chair and let the right hand hold on to the back of your chair or the bottom of your chair, wherever you can grip to find steadiness. Your hip pointers are going to point in the same direction that your knee is going and your shoulders are going to line up in that same line. So you're facing toward your original right and you can slide your left foot back. We'll do it on the ball of the foot here, pressing out through the heel. <sighs> Shoulders over hips, so notice if you're leaning forward and you wanna try to be as upright as you can. Now for most of you, you'll need to have a little bend in your knee, most likely, but what we, automa what we ultimately want to work toward is sliding that foot back enough and pressing out through the heel that you feel that lengthening of the back of the leg, the knee crease lifting. So you're powering up that back leg and you are gonna feel a nice deep stretch in the whole front of the hip flexor here. The whole psoas muscle goes uh, along here and also connects with the low back. And you're going to stretch that whole front of the hip flexor. And you can take the opposite arm and reach it to the sky. So your left arm reaches to the sky, squaring your hips to the front. If you need to bend that back knee a little bit, you can, if it feels like it's really tight in your low back to avoid also to avoid bending forward. So vertical line through the upper body. If it's available and you have your balance, both hands can come to the sky. Warrior one. So we bring into our mind that quality of determination 
and courage and strength and fortitude. Find that Ujjayi breath. And then slowly release, turning your hips toward the center. You can bounce out the legs a moment before we come to the other side. I'm going to let the left thigh go along the front edge of your chair, just your left buttock on the chair. Right foot slides back. On the ball of your foot, so all five toes are down on the back leg. Square your hips so that your left hip pointer is level with your right hip pointer. The hips are wanna, gonna kinda wanna open to the side. In this warrior pose, warrior one, we face our challenges head on. So shine the headlights of your hips straight ahead. Your other foot is on the floor. If your legs are short enough that your foot is off of the floor, then that's where you might wanna take your blanket and put your foot on your blanket. <sighs> All right, so see what you can do to power up that back leg, lifting the back of the knee till you feel the juice in the hip flexor. Don't wanna go for pain, but you wanna go for the juice. Lengthen up through the crown of the head as you root down through the tail and then take the outside arm and reach it to the sky. So you get a whole lovely stretch through the side of your torso here. The whole side body is stretching the, the leg all the way up through the torso, all the way up through the arm. Unshrug the shoulder. If both arms are available to lift, if you have your balance, you can do that. Ujjayi breath, finding that place of determination, courage, focus, being on purpose whatever it is that, wherever that is that applies in your life. Maybe if you want to take it to the next level of challenge, you can take it into yoga mudra arms if you are steady and balanced and comfortable in your lower body here. That's optional. And then the hands come down, uh, hips release and just bounce up out the legs here. Ah, oh. I'm going to give you a moment to find your way down onto your mat or blanket space so we can come down onto the floor. So take your time if you need to reset up your camera onto the floor or onto a, onto a firm mattress, if you have one, whatever uh, supports your comfort here. If getting up and down off of the floor is difficult, as I always have reminded people, it's fine to do it on a bed. And once you find your way down onto your space, your mat or your blanket, I invite you to hug your thighs in toward your belly. And rock side to side. And just come into stillness centered on your spine. And bring your hands to your knees and find some yummy hip circles. So we're going to open the legs wide, let the knees circle open in opposite directions, and then draw in inner thighs together as the thighs come toward the belly. So see how wide you can make those circles. Sending lots of breath to your hips.
and circle the other way. So knees come wide apart and then inner thighs come together. And then hug the thighs in again. From here, I'm gonna invite you to lengthen your legs out in front of you. We're gonna do something that also, another practice that also strengthens the core. If this feels too vigorous for you, this, this next um, sequence, the other option would be for you to come into wind relieving pose, which we've done before. So you can always do that instead. But here, I'm gonna invite you to lie flat and bring your hands underneath your buttocks. So you're gonna kind of shift to one side and then the other. So you're actually sitting on your hands and see if you can make a little triangle with your fingers so that your thumbs touch and the, tip, the tips of your thumbs touch and the tips of your pointer fingers touch. So it's gonna be like a little triangle like this under your bottom. So it's kind of like around the sacrum area or a little bit lower and the hands are face palms facing down and you're sitting with your uh, buttocks on your hands. This is gonna support your low back. As we do some gentle leg lifts, we're gonna start with one at a time. Your arms don't need to be all the way under your body, just the hands. Legs stretched out in front of you, feet about hip width apart. Press the low back toward the mat. And inhale, slowly lift one leg so that slowly on the, take the whole breath to let the leg come perpendicular to the body. Exhale, slowly float that leg down. And again, if this does not feel good for your low back, if it puts a strain, you can just come into either wind relieving pose or hand to toe pose, just doing a nice slow a nice hamstring stretch if that's more comfortable for you. Other side, inhale, lift the other leg to come straight up and exhale, slow and control. The slower and more controlled we do this movement, the more it tones and strengthens the abdominal muscles. And shifting side to side, inhale, lift one leg, exhale, float that leg down nice and slow. At the end of your exhale, the foot lands. The back of the heel touches. Inhale up. Other leg, exhale down. Using your ujjayi breath. Maybe you want to use that soham mantra as you sync up the breath and the movement. Now, for those of you who want a deeper challenge, if you have strong, uh, strong abdominal muscles, the next level of challenge, and this is of course optional, is to lift both legs at the same time. Exhale down slow and controlled with the breath. If you feel challenged enough doing one leg at a time, then stay with that. If this is new for your practice, maybe just doing three to five on each side. So when you've done as many as you can comfortably do here and you feel equal on both sides, slowly hug your knees into your chest again. Hmm. Give yourself an embrace. You deserve that hug. <sighs> and then place the soles of the feet down on the mat, preparing for bridge pose. We'll do a few bridge rolls. So <sighs> bringing the heels close to the buttocks, having the hands beside you, palms down. See if your middle finger can touch the tips of your heels. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. We just want to bring our hands 
and are uh, in that direction and the heels as close to the buttocks as they'll comfortably go. Inhale, rolling up one vertebra at a time from the bottom of the spine all the way up to between the shoulder blades, spreading the heart. Hips lift higher than the heart. Exhale, roll down like that necklace, that pearl necklace, lifting one pearl at a time, slowly letting the breath let you lift up from bottom to top. Exhale, rolling down, seeing if you can isolate each vertebra one at a time as you roll down the upper back and middle back, lower back, till the sacrum, several vertebrae together, settles down onto the mat. And see if you can do two more rounds of this slow lifting and lowering, syncing up movement and breath and attention. And when you are ready, finding your final expression of the bridge pose, holding here for a few breaths, three to five breaths. If you wanna take it to the next level of expression and get a little more support for lifting, keeping the hips higher than the heart, tuck the shoulder blades toward one another, tuck the arms under the body, interlace your fingers and press up. Press those hip pointers to the sky, press down into the feet, draw the shoulder blades toward the center line of the body and the back to spread the heart, press the top of the chest toward the chin, breathe and enjoy in and out through the nose, keep the inner thighs moving toward one another so the knees don't splay out, keep the feet flat, there's a lot going on in this pose, oh yeah, and when you're ready to release, after three or five breaths, or whenever, slowly let that string of pearls lower down and hug the knees in toward the chest. In traditional Hatha yoga, there is usually a time for some kind of inversion or upside down pose where we allow the blood and fluids and energy from the lower extremities to reverse and pull down back to the heart. That's why some people practice headstands or shoulder stand or legs up the wall as a simpler version of that. I'm going to invite you to do a very gentle inversion here, bringing your legs to set up for the bridge like we just did, knees bent, knees to the sky, feet hip width apart, and just roll the the pelvis, the hips, and the low back off of the mat. You may need to lift your heels for a moment here to place a block in the flattest setting underneath your sacrum. Not in the sensitive low back area, but just the sacrum, the flat area below the lumbar curve. Just so the lower end of the, of the block kind of lines up with the top of the butt crack. And you can either just stay like this in a supported bridge, or if it's available to you, lift your legs to the sky and see if you can take a few breaths here, allowing the lower extremities to be higher than the heart. This has a calming effect on the nervous system. Those of you who are experienced, and I know there's a couple of you who are in shoulder stand can take it into full shoulder stand and plow. If you prefer, here's your shoulder stand. Here's your plow. If you're not familiar with that pose or you don't feel comfortable doing it, it's been a long time, then I would say just stay with the legs up on a block. And if getting that block underneath your low back was a challenge and you feel more stable, just having your sacrum flat, your whole back body on the mat and just lifting your legs straight up, you can do that. Let's take five deep breaths in that inversion, whatever your inversion is for you. <laughs>
And when you're ready to release your inversion, you can slowly bend the knees and let the feet land on the mat. Press into the balls of the feet, lift the heels a little to slide that block away and from underneath you if you're using a block and roll down slowly. Once again, hug your knees in toward your chest and we'll take it into a closing twist. Let the knees, bring the legs into an L shape. Bring the arms into T and oh, shoulder height and just let the knees float down to one side, keeping knees in line with your hip. Place a blanket or a block in between your thighs for a little greater comfort. Let the backs of both shoulders just soften into the mat. Turn your head to face the hand that is opposite your knees. Total of three long, slow, deep breaths here. Maybe touching into that Soham mantra. <laughs> In your reclining, revolved abdomen twist. Another way to really calm and balance the nervous system are these twists. When you're ready to shift to the other side, making sure the knees stay in line with the hips and the legs stay in that 90 degree angle. Float the knees down to the other side. And for added comfort, make sure you have a little something in between your thighs, block or blanket. The backs of both shoulders soften into the mat, arms are out at shoulder height. Turn to look opposite your knees and enjoy three long, slow, deep breaths in and out. And when you're ready to release, finding your way into Shavasana, corpse pose for final relaxation, make sure you cover up. If you, uh, to keep yourself warm because the body does cool down quite a bit. So find your way into a comfortable, Reclining relaxation position, maybe a bolster underneath your knees. This is where I wish that I could be with you to kind of prop you up and get everybody really comfortable and tuck you in to Shavasana, but you'll need to do that for yourselves now. Palms turned up by your sides. Get a little tuck of the shoulder blades toward the center, just slightly, so your heart remains open. So hum, so hum, so hum, she hum. So hum, so hum. So hum shivo hum I am that I am 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 So hum 
ham so ham so ham shi wo ham so ham so ham so ham shi wo ham i am that i am i am that i am I invite you to slowly bend the knees and bring the feet as wide as your mat, if you're on a mat, just a little wider than the hips and let the inner knees come together. So the knees are resting, inside of the knees are resting toward one another so that you can keep your knees bent. Bring one hand to the low belly, below the navel, and one hand to the center of the chest. We're going to stay lying on our backs, just for ease and comfort here. I'm going to invite you to, once again, touch into that yogic breath, three parts, beginning with the rising of the low belly. And then invite the ribs to expand and the chest to lift as you fill up the chest with breath to surround the heart. And then like a wave receding, exhale chest, empty ribs, empty belly, and let the navel draw in toward the spine. In and out through the nose with a gentle narrowing of the airway in the back of the throat so the breath whispers. And bring the mantra so hum into your awareness, so on the in breath, hum on the out breath. Let the mantra be as long as your breath, so as you fill up, hum. As you empty out, maybe you can milk that inner inner sound of hmm, hum. Let it echo inwardly in your mind, so that with every repetition of your breath, you are affirming, "I am that I am. I am that I am." And some of you may know that this is that. This is actually what, in the Bible, what God said was God's name. I am that I am. So that is that cre creation, that power that breathes us all. It is the infinite. So hum is affirming who we are beyond who we think we are. Acknowledging our essential self that is infinite and eternal, whole and complete, divinity embodied.
with this mantra riding on the breath, we have the opportunity to contemplate that essential divinity with every in-breath and out-breath. You've been breathing your whole life long. Now we have a chance to make conscious the reminder that we are that we are that divinity. We are that. Affirming our true nature with every in-breath and out-breath. And then I invite you slowly to draw the knees in toward the chest and roll onto your side. Take a breath or two as you're in your, on your side before coming up to seated. again, finding your yogic seat either in your chair or seated on the floor if that's available to you. Open heart. Bring the hands together in prayer position. And those who wish to, we can close the practice together with the sound of Om. Deep breath in. Om. Namaste. Mm. Feel free to come off of mute if you would like to share anything.